Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Mid Pokemaster here, and today we're going to be doing the Week 4 battle for IBLD League. So, right now we are currently 3-0, not very high differential, I believe, let me go check, it's 3-0 plus 6, so, not the highest, but it's still pretty good. We are currently tied with OP Jellicent for like first in the league based off like, not differential, but based off like being 3-0 so hopefully we can win this week and keep staying in second place or maybe even overcome Jelly who's a big fan of mine and I'm a big fan of his so yeah this week we are going up against the Boland Bovines coached by I believe Dr. Slacking yeah it's him he has arguably the most broken draft in the league and that's saying something concerning most drafts in this league are broken. His team consists of Tapu Koko, Kieran Black, Greninja, Mega Pinsir, Nihiligo, Yuxi, Z Heatran, Z Ronomo, Gligar, Conkelder, and Gastrodon. To think he even got Tapu Koko and Kieran Black on the same team is insane. Considering those are both round one picks, arguably pick one picks. So. He did get Tapu Koko pick one, but still just see Kieran Black paired with that alongside a Nihiligo and a Mega Pinsir, which just is, can destroy almost any team. It's crazy to see. So, I want to go over my team now. So, first of all, I'm bringing a weakness policy. Necrozma with Autonomize, Earth Power, Photon Geyser, and Dark Pulse. Because, as you can look at his team, he doesn't really have a switch in. Anything... Basically, everything gets killed if they're low enough. Even some things just die from full, so I'm kind of hoping about... So I'm really hoping that Krasnoy can put in some work this week. Next, I have a Choice Band Scizor. First match is coming to the season with Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Super Power, Quick Attack. This thing just destroys most of his team once Heatran's gone. And he even can beat like a bulkier Heatran if I click Super Power and he's not faster than me. And once Gastrodon's gone, it just wins with Bullet Punch, really. Milk Tank, Tank is coming with Leftovers, Thick Fat. This is my Tapu Koko switch in this week with Milk, Drink, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, Seismic Toss. Extremely specially defensive. Because this is my Tapu Koko answer this week. Yes, he can U-turn or Volt Switch out, but this is my switch in. Because Zapdos and Garchomp aren't a switch in. Next, I do have my Zapdos with Leftovers, Roost, Volt Switch, HP, Ice, and Toxic. I can't remember what the speed was for. I think it was like a max speed Heatran. Then a lot of physical bulk and 12 special attack. Next, I'm bringing the wrong Z-move Garchomp, which does affect the battle. I brought Grounding Z, Sandstorm, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Rock Slide with the Sand Veil. And I believe I'm... I can't remember exactly when I'm outpacing. It's probably Kieran Black or something like that. Yeah, I'm outspeeding Kieran Black, but I accidentally brought Ground Z instead of Rocky Z for Sandstorm, so I was going to bring Z Sandstorm for that plus one speed boost, but brought wrong Z move. And now I have Mega Blastoise with Hidden Power Grass, Rabbit Spin, Water Pulse, Aurora Spear, or a Spear. And max speed, modest, so I cannot speed a modest Heatran. 100 in special attacks, so I can two shot, two shot, especially defensive Gastrodon. And then through the rest in HP. So here, I'm just going to lead off with, I believe, is my milk tank. So, and he leads off with Greninja, I believe. So, yep, I lead off with milk tank. As he leads his Greninja, as I said. So, here I thought he was just going to go for a U-turn to get some initiative here. As But instead he just goes for the spikes, which for some reason I didn't really expect a hazard setting Greninja. That kind of surprised me. So, I set up my Stealth Rocks, as you can tell. As here I switch out knowing... Because... I predicted him to go for another spot because I didn't really want him to set up set up all over my face with them. 
So I go into Zapdos as he makes the good reading goes for Dark Pulse. And does a, around 40% to my Zapdos. But here he goes for the Ice Beam. And gets me extremely low, but I live. And I go for the Roost. So, I don't go back up all the way. But I get pretty close. Like just a few HP points under. So, here I believe he predicts me to switch again. Yeah, he does. I go into my Blastoise because I want to scare this thing out. I want to, because I, I probably think I'm going to go for Aura Sphere, but really I just want to Rapid Spin. But he makes a good read and goes for Dark Pulse again. So, now my Blastoise is at around half, half health. But here, he just goes for his Gastrodon. So, I actually didn't go for the Rapid Spin here. I went for the Aura Sphere because I was predicting him to... Just want to attack me again. But. He doesn't. He switched out. But I went for Aura Spear. So. Now I know this set is. This Gastrodon is physically defensive. So. Here. I just go for. I, He actually switches out. He's probably trying to like. See what moves I'm going to go for. But here he goes for the. Topical goal. As. I can't remember exactly what I go for here. I actually went for the rapid spin here, so my hazards are gone. And the spike is gone, but my stealth rocks are still up. As I switch out here into my milk tank, because that's my designated switch into this thing. As he goes for, I believe, the defog, which really surprised me. I didn't really see him bringing defog. But, you know, he did. So, here he goes for the thunderbolt. And it doesn't do much. <laughs> doesn't do much but it does over half but I go for earthquake here because I want to get this thing extremely weakened to make it easier for scissor to to put in scissor bullet punch range as here he goes for the hidden power fire I meant ice actually as I go for milk drink he was predicting my Garchomp to come in and take the t-bolt but now I'm almost back up to full I might be back to full after these leftovers. Nope, I'm not, but I'm very close. So here he goes for Volt Switch. So now I know three moves on his set. Actually, I know all four. And I know that his best way of touching most of my team is with Thunderbolt. But I knew that going in. So here he brings in his Heatran as I go for Seismic Toss. So that does a good chunk. Shows me that he's leftovers and not like Shookaberry. And he shows that he's faster than me. So I know this is like a, an extremely fast set. So, But Mill Tank I didn't really need that much. So I just went for Earthquake. As he brings back in his Greninja I believe. Yeah he does. But I actually went for Stealth Rocks. Because I knew he didn't want to take another. I knew he didn't want to take an Earthquake. So. I believe he goes for a spike here. Yeah, as I go for the milk drink. And this Motang's already put in its worth this match. It's weakened the Tabu Coco. Got in a small chunk off on the Heatran. This is more than what I would have asked for. Or expected out of it. So here he goes for the Dark Pulse. As I go for a Seismic Toss. Just because this does more than Earthquake. So I really just want to get down, I want to get this Greninja off the field or weakened. But here he goes into his Gastrodon because he knows he can take a uh, Seismic Toss into a, uh, he can take at least two I believe. So he can just recover up on this turn. And I believe he knows my entire set so he knows I can't do anything to him. So here. I just switch out and go into Mega Blastoise as he goes for a recover. Yep, he goes for a recover. And he gets to around the exact... He gets a little... He almost gets to full, basically. So, here, I go for the Rapid Spin, predicting him not the one to take an HP Grass. But he knew he could live it, so he stayed in. And goes for the toxic. So 
That was very unfortunate. Because yes, the spikes were annoying, but at the same time, this Gastrodon is more annoying. So as you can tell, he's back up to full. I'm toxic. And here's where there was a big 50-50. So I could have gone for Aura Spear or HP Grass. But I went for the HP Grass. As he goes through a recover predict. So, because he knew that was going to happen. So, here is the actual 50-50 because... Here, no matter what, I killed him with HP Grass, but he could easily switch into something like Huron Black. Or I could click Aura Spear and predict the switch to come in. But I end up, he ends up going into his Huron Black as I click HP Grass. So it does basically nothing. Because that, just because that's a good switch in. So he took very minimal damage. And Mega Blastoise is left on 5%. So he, he just kills my Mega Blastoise with the Ice Beam. So it wasn't surprising. He didn't he didn't need this around anymore. And I felt like there was no reason to save it. So here I go into Scizor and I make a big misplay. I go for the U-turn predicting him to be Choice Scar for him not wanting to take a Bullet Punch. But he stays in and just kills my Scizor with HP Fire. I didn't click Bullet Punch because I'd been playing safe the entire game. And I predicted him to think I'd play safe again. But turn, but it, I ended up not. And here was a misclick. I wanted to go for, what's it called, the Autonomize first. But instead I misclicked. And, but I mean it doesn't really matter because here I go for the Autonomize. So it's not like it makes a whole lot of difference. So he just goes for a second ice beam and brings me down low. And then I realized he he can have wider Shuriken Greninja. But I killed this Kieran Black with the Necrozma, which is really great. So here comes in his Greninja. And it was an extreme roll on whether I would kill or not with the Earth Power. So, as you can see, I go for Earth Power. And he ends up having a lot of HP investment. So, he lives and goes for Dark Pulse. So, that was very unfortunate because if I would have had something to kill that thing, if I would have got, like, another Rock Switch in, I would have killed it. And I probably would have just won. But here, I just go into Mill Tank. And I go for Earthquake just because... I didn't want him to get another spike up if I milk drank, so I just went for Earthquake and killed this thing. So, he's looking like he's in a really good position right now. So he goes back into his Tapu Koko and takes more Stealth Rocks. But he ends up, he stays in and kills... Actually, I switched out for some reason. I don't know why I sacked off Zapdos here. Yeah, I don't know what that play was about. Yep, so Zapdos goes down. Hindsight, I should have just let Motank die and bring in Garchomp. But here I wanted to go for the Z Sandstorm. But that was when I realized I had Grandium Z, not Rockium Z, so I couldn't. And... I went for Earthquake and I killed the Tapu Koko. And at this point I knew I couldn't break down the, what's it called, the Gastrodon anymore. There was, there was no way for me to break it. But he goes into Heligo. Takes rocks and at this point I knew he would just beat me. So he goes for Dazzling and Gleam and kills me. And... Gets the special attack raise. So, my only mom left his middle tank. I was hoping maybe since he went for Dazzling Gleam, he'll stay in and let me get the kill on it. Since he knows he can't beat me. But instead, he just sacks off his Heatran. So, at this point, I know I can't win, like I said before, because I can't stall out the Gastrodon. If I hadn't Heal Bell, maybe I could, but. He already knows I don't have Heal Bell. So, 
Yep, I lose my first battle of the IBL this season. So now I'm 3 and 0 plus 4 cuz I think he won 2-0. And we didn't want to do like a stally. We didn't want to do any more stall than we had to cuz I DM'd him like I we both acknowledged that he guaranteed one. So here I believe for like the next few turns I had to click like Stealth Rock or something. Something like that along the lines. Because I didn't want it to be boring to play or watch. Nobody really wants to saw, see a stall fest where you know one person will win over the other. So I go for Seismic Toss this turn as he goes for a recover. I believe. Yeah, and here is where I messaged him. And. I think he just scalds or earth powers me as I just click stealth rock twice. So, yeah guys, thank you for watching. Think don't forget to like and subscribe and my what's it called my 100 sub q and I got 20 likes, which is insane. So, I would love at least 10 likes here. If I can hit 20 likes on that video, I can hit 10 here. So, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace.